Okay, today we're going to talk about lenses and there's a lot of information that we can gain simply by looking at a lens. First of all, everything uh, as it relates to a lens, uh, the information on it or most everything on it is expressed in millimeters. Okay? So if we simply even look at the lens cap, on the back side of the lens cap it says 77 mm, meaning that the, the lens cap is a 77 millimeter and the uh, diameter of this front element of this lens is 77 millimeter. So if we wanted to get a filter to go over the front of the lens to protect it, which I highly recommend, uh, we need a 77 millimeter lens. Uh, again, you look at this one and it says uh, on the front of it here, it's an 85 millimeter lens, but that's not an 85 millimeter opening on the front of the lens. We have to find the lens cap for it. That's not the right one. Yes, it is. And that says that it is a 58 millimeter opening. So if we wanted to get a filter for the front of that, we would need a 58 millimeter filter. So already we get information simply even on the lens cap. Okay. Now lenses are expressed in their focal length, okay, not how big they are, but their focal length again in millimeters. Okay. So we're going to look at this lens again. And this one says that it is a 17 to 55 millimeter zoom lens. Okay, well that's pretty good, 17 to 55. 17 to 55 mm. Now we have another lens right here that comes with our kit cameras that we have for students. This one says 18 to 55. Well, that's only one millimeter difference. You're right, but if we start looking at what makes one lens more costly or more expensive or perform better, we can start looking at some of the details and see what the difference is. So this lens on the front of it says that it is a 3556. So that means as you zoom this lens, it will change f-stops. It starts off at a 3.5 and as you zoom out to 55 millimeter zoom, it will change to a 5.6. This lens, on the other hand, is what's called a constant aperture. So as I zoom, it will stay at f2.8. And I think you can see pretty much the difference by looking at the size of the front element of this, these two lenses. This one is a 3.5.5.6. This one is a 2.8 constant. So you can see why this lens would cost more. And if you could if I could, uh, you could lift these two lenses up, you would see this one's much heavier than this lens is. A lot more glass, bigger opening, lets more light in. More expensive, but better performance. Okay? Now, that's a couple of smaller zoom lenses. We also have fixed focal length lenses, or what we call prime lenses. This doesn't move. It stays at 50 millimeters. Okay? So we have a 50 and we have an 85. Now the benefit to these lenses are many. One of the great benefits of these 55 millimeter and 85 millimeter is that they go very low in the f-stop range. This 50 millimeter is a 1.4 50 millimeter lens. Very short or shallow depth of field you can achieve with this lens. This 85 is a 1.8, 1 1.885 millimeter, right? Tremendous portrait lens right here. Perfect for doing outdoor portraits, allowing you to have that short or shallow depth of field and completely blur the background. Just even three, four, five feet behind your subject, you can completely blur the background. So these are very handy to have, very beneficial. Also, at 1.4 and 1.8, you're letting lots of light in, and that allows you to use a little faster shutter speed so you don't get a blurry or fuzzy picture. So very beneficial. Uh, I think pretty much a 50 millimeter 1.4 or 1.8 is pretty much a mandatory lens for a lot of students to have because they're not expensive, and they have very, very short or shallow depth of field. So they're tremendous uh, value in these lenses. Now this one's about 300 but you can get one of these for about 99 or or $100 now. A, uh, a Canon uh, 1.8 is about $100, so very inexpensive lens. Okay, now let's look into a couple of other, say, a little bit more expensive lenses. We can look at this uh, kit lens that comes with our cameras. This is a 55 to 250, okay? 
pretty good lens, nothing really wrong with it, but again, it's a variable aperture f4, f5, 6. We look at this one, this is a 70 to 200, but this is a constant f2.8. The aperture never changes throughout your entire zoom range at f2.8. So very similar in zoom ranges, 70 to 200, 55 to 250, but obviously very different in, in physical size and in performance and in f-stop range. So when you start looking at why lenses cost more, well, there's a reason. Better materials, better glass, a constant f-stop, it's a much heavier lens. It's made for a professional to use every day and beat up and not take care of and probably still the lens will be okay. These plastic lenses, although they do deliver pretty decent optical performance, they, they're not meant to be handled very rough at all. They won't take a lateral or a side impact very well at all. They will uh, not track straight when you zoom them and your pictures will be fuzzy and you'll wonder what happened. It's because the lens has gotten knocked out of alignment. Like your car get alignment, it won't go straight. Same thing with the lens. The glass elements in these lenses must be parallel to each other. If it gets knocked out of alignment, well then you have problems and your pictures can get a little fuzzy. Okay. Also very, very heavy, robust, strongly built, meant for a professional to use every day. Okay. Now one of the cool things about some of these other lenses is that uh, you can use uh, some adapters on them. This is a really cool adapter because this is a two times extender. So let's do the math on that real quick. This is a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now I can put an x2 on there, which is what this is, a two times extender, so that will double my focal range. So this becomes a 140 to 400, nice millimeter lens. However, there is also a consequence. This adapter or this multiplier absorbs two stops of light. So 284, that becomes a f5.6 lens. So a 140 to 456. Still not bad because this is about $300. This is well over a thousand. If you bought a 140 to 400, it would be another couple thousand. Where with this, hey, a few hundred dollars, you have one lens that now can do two things. Very handy to have. I carried a two, a two times extender with me for 20 years. Very handy uh, uh, device to have. Very beneficial. Okay. Now, the cool thing about lenses is we have all these specialty lenses that allow us to do some unique things. Here is a 100 macro lens. Now, what the macro lens simply allows you to do is to get very, very close to the subject. So if you like taking close-ups of flowers or insects, bees, or whatever, uh, jewelry, a macro lens is very desirable to have. It allows you to get very, very close to your subject. Let's say you can't afford a macro lens. Let's say you have an 85 millimeter lens. Well, what you can do is put an extender on it. Here is a 12 millimeter extension tube. It's just a hole. It's just a piece of uh, metal. And you can put that on, and then you put that on your camera. And what this does is it moves the lens out a little bit, and it allows you to get closer to your subject. Now, that means you probably won't have infinity in focus, but you'll be able to get much closer. And of course, these, these uh, uh, extension tubes are much, much less expensive than buying a macro lens. So this is superior performance but you can do remarkable things with an extension tube as well. So a lot of variety of things that you can get with uh, an extension tube, okay? Now, there's one more feature that we need to talk about with regards to lenses, and that is what camera you have, okay? So when we start looking at these millimeter of zoom here, the, all of this assumes that you're shooting on a full frame camera, FF full frame camera, okay? The dimensions of this are 24 millimeter by 36 millimeter. It's the same size 
as an old-fashioned piece of 35 millimeter film. Back in the film days is where that dimension comes from. The newer cameras have a much smaller chip to them. And as a result, there is a, what's called a crop factor. If you have a Canon camera, it's 1.6. If you have a Nikon camera, it's 1.5. So what does that mean? That means you have to multiply whatever lens you have by that factor. So if you had a 100 millimeter lens times 1.6 would equal a 160. So that 100 millimeter lens, because you have the small sensor camera, automatically becomes a 160. So a little bit about what's called crop factor and some difficulty that can arise with crop factor. Because when we start looking at depth of field, the bigger the lens, the less depth of field we have. So crop factor can be a big deal, but not necessarily. We simply want to frame and focus our subject and take those pictures. But it's nice to know that if we had a crop sensor camera, okay, that 1.6 multiplication factor allows our lens to be actually a little bit bigger or a little bit longer or a little more magnification than what is written on the outside of our lens. So if we had a 100 millimeter lens, it would be, act more like a 160. Okay? If we had a 400 millimeter lens times 1.6, 6 times 4 is 24, we would have a 640 millimeter lens. And that is why I will probably, for the rest of my life, own both cameras, a small sensor camera and a full frame camera. So I can put my big lens on my small frame camera, essentially giving me a 640 millimeter lens. That's tremendous. That allows you to really get in close on something far away. So a little bit about lenses, millimeters, everything that goes on with lenses. But the big issue with lenses is, the lens is the window to your subject. It is the angle of view to your subject. It is perspective. That's what a lens does. It is the window or the view into your subject. So we can have very, very wide lenses. They certainly have uses for landscapes. We can have mid-range lenses, great for portraits. And we can have these big telephotos, great for doing sports photography or bringing something that's far away in close to us. So a variety of lenses, a variety of features and uses for each lens. Macro lenses, great for getting in very close to subjects, right? These constant aperture lenses are, are wonderful because you never change your f-stop. These fixed focal length lenses give you very, very short, shallow depth of field, very big apertures, and aren't terribly expensive. So a variety of things with regards to lenses. One more thing as we begin to look at what lenses do and what they, what they cover. Here is a same, similar lens from Nikon, a 70 to 200. Here's the Canon 70 to 200. This Nikon is an F4, this Canon is an F2.8. If we look at the front element of the lens, it becomes even more clear now to see that you need the bigger opening so that the aperture can be open bigger to let more light in. So you begin to wonder why certain lenses cost more one than the other. Make sure you're comparing apples to apples when you're looking at the cost and performance and price of a lens. Okay, F4, F2.8, which one lets in more light? Obviously the 2.8. Okay, so a number of things about lenses, but remember the lens is really the perspective, the window of view into your subject and lenses can do wonderful things for you. Last comment on lenses, spend more money on a lens than you can, as you can. Spend as much as you can on the lens. You will, you will uh, can't believe you spent that much money on a lens, but you'll never regret paying more for a lens because it will continue to deliver that kind of performance year after year after year. Cameras eventually wear out, the shutters break, Things happen to them, lenses can last for many, 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 many years. I still have a couple of lenses that are 40 years old. So spend money on glass. You'll hate spending the money, but you'll never regret it. Thanks. See you next time.